Hello, and here we are again in the kitchen. The reason we're in here is after the 2022 part two failures of this orchid season, this little lady stayed on my mind. I kept thinking, I'm like, I need to know what's in that pot. I wanna know what's in the pot. I wanna know what's in the pot. So I took her out of the pot. This is the Pontanera Dick Smith crossed with Horse Maxima that when I showed her, we were looking and there were no roots on the, new, well, let's see, one, two, three latest new growths. So this is what we have. Not much to write home about. And they do look tired and desiccated, but they are still firm. So they're doing something. And then she did have a little bit of the layman here that needed to come off. And this part of the root is dead. However, I'm leaving it on there, if for nothing else but anchoring, as well as these. These may not even be working. I'm just leaving them on there for anchoring. Now, what I'm putting her in is a clear pot that just has the holes at the bottom because I'm thinking that the clay pot may not be the right option for her at this time because I think it's drying everything out too quickly. When I took her out, the top layer of the pot was dry, the bottom layer was still damp, and this is what she had in there. So it was just medium-sized bark with some large perlite pieces. And I'm going to use some of the mycorrhizal fungi to help encourage healthy root growth. And all the supplies I'm using, other than the mycorrhizal fungi, you can get at the Orchid Supply Store, our sponsor here at Trisha's Orchid Life. Uh, if you want to use a 12% discount, use coupon code TRISH in the checkout. And remember, they ship everything for free. So what I'm using is the larger bark for aeration, since there are no air holes here, other than on the bottom and then some of the sphagnum moss, New Zealand. Again, you can get that at the orchid supply store. So let's put some of the bark at the bottom. Quite a bit here. Let's see where we're going to put her, how we're going to put her. Oh, that actually works pretty good. All right, so let me take a little bit of that off. And with the larger bark, like I said, there's going to be more air pockets in there. I don't know why my hand's not working. There we go. And I'm only going to put about, about that much mycorrhizal fungi in there. Okay. And then I'll just put a couple of little pieces over that just so that it has a place to sit. Let me take that off of there. And then we're just gonna set her in the center of the pot. And let me get these roots kind of situated and wrapped down. And I do apologize, because I know in that video, which I've not posted the video as of right now, I do ask for your advice. And I'm doing this before I even post the other video. I just couldn't wait. Is anyone else like that? You ask someone an opinion, advice on something, and then you just go ahead and you just take it upon yourself to try to figure it out on your own without waiting? Or am I the only one? Let's see if we can push that down. All right. So I'm going to try to use the same stake since it is kind of already attached to her. There we are. I may have to use more than one stake, but for right now... That is kind of where we want her in the center. Okay, get some more bark. And like I said, I'm just putting the moss kind of at the top because I did see, and I should have showed you before I put her in here, but I did see some root nubbins. I don't know if you can see them through the plastic, but there's a couple of little root nubbins on this latest growth that also has a new little growth trying to start on it. So the moss is going to go close to that to try to help encourage root growth. And I'm putting it just right up under here. 
And I have found, I used to use my moss dampened, but I found I really like using it dry because it doesn't feel as weird. I'm a texture person. And sometimes when you see me wearing gloves, most of the time that's because of the texture of the products that I'm using. And they kind of feel weird to me on that particular day because like today I can just use the moss and I'm, I mean the moss, the uh, bark and I'm fine. Other days, the bark kind of has a weird feel to me and I have to use gloves. Am I the only weird one or are there others out there like me that have that same one day everything's fine and then the next day the same specific thing that was not bothering you before is now quite a nuisance. And I do see a few more eyes that look like they could develop if she could get some roots in her. So, let me finish doing this and I'll show you guys. And I do apologize for all of the silence, but I'm putting together a Jenga puzzle here to make sure that I have the moss in the right place because I don't want moss where there's no possibility of, or no root activity showing, let's put it that way. Not saying that there's not a possibility that there won't be in the future, but as of right now, I don't see any activity of root growth. As well as I'm trying to cover up the moss on the outside because I'm not going to put her in a decorative pot. I'm actually going to leave her out. So let me squeeze and put that piece of bark. Whoa right there. So this way the moss doesn't turn green too fast. It will eventually, I'm sure, but at this point in juncture, not too quickly, I hope. There we go. All right, a little bit more bark chips around here and we will be done with her. And then I'm just going to stake her and make her more secure. She's still wobbling quite a bit, even with trying to use the bark to secure her. Let's see, maybe if we put a piece of under here. And this is just a spur of the moment type of thing. I was just sitting there contemplating. I'm like, oh, I wonder why she's not growing roots. Why is she not growing roots? Why she, does she have any roots? I didn't see any roots. So of course, as we orchid hobbyists are nosy, want to know what's going on inside the pot, I took her out of the pot, and lo and behold, not much to see here, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that, I think, is all I'm going to do as far as that part, and then I am going to, oh, actually, let's do it from the older growth here, because I know there's nothing on this side poke that in. Let's see, there we go. Oh yeah, she's nice and sturdy now. So what I did is I poked it into a piece of bark at the bottom to help hold her a lot steadier. Look at that, she is not moving at all. But I do see a little, little area that I do want to put another piece of bark, just as a precaution. All right, let me show you what I did. So, you go right there. Come on. There you go. What I did is underneath this newest growth here is the moss. And I left just enough of a little air pocket so that the moss will illuminate humidity in that immediate area, possibly encourage some root growth. We will keep an eye on her and if she's going to do anything, I expect it'll be in the next month or so. Because I do see, can you kind of see the little root nubbin right, right there? So she, she does have a little root nubbin right there. And then she's got some more underneath, as well as this new growth right here. And with that, I will give her just a little sprinkle of water, just enough to wet the moss and get the mycorrhizal fungi activated because it does need the water and then we will just play the waiting game 
Guys, I appreciate you stopping by. Again, I apologize for not waiting for your input on what I should or shouldn't be doing with her. So, since I didn't wait, what do you think is going to happen? Do you agree with what I did or would you have done something differently? Everybody have a beautiful day and thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. And y'all keep those comments coming. I love talking to you guys. Y'all have no idea. During the day when I'm at work and I get frustrated, sometimes I look and I see a comment. That helps settle me down. You people are saving lives. Thank you again. I'll see you guys next time.